What's up everybody? I thought today I would do a slightly different video. In the past I have made videos are exclusively on how you can improve at your uh, becoming a better trader uh, or shared videos of my own trading strategy and edges that I believe are relevant in the market. But today I thought I'd do something a bit different and talk about the worst trader and what not to do. And uh, going to be completely transparent, this is from personal experience working with uh, different traders and I've pretty much pulled out some of the worst traits that I've seen in them. Um, I'm sure they'll be fine with me sharing that. Uh, I've helped many traders as a performance coach and I'm sure that they'd look back on these times and go, yeah, I admit I was a bit like that. So if you see any of these traits in your own trading, you probably want to consider changing them. Uh, at the end of the video, I will be touching base on some of the things you can immediately do um, to improve. So I'm just going to jump into this. If you do find it useful, then let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into the video. So it's going to be a very basic slideshow, more just going to be able to talk about different points. So I'm going to start off with attitude and attitude is really important in becoming successful at anything, not just trading. Um, because it's, it's really the backbone of how much work you're going to put in. If you have a really poor attitude, then you're simply not going to be putting in the right kind of work because you're not going to care. And I think that a lot of people could work a lot on their attitude uh, towards trading and towards becoming successful. I always think of it as if you look at the people who are at the top of their game in anything, whether it be sport, trading, they have a pretty impeccable attitude to uh, success. They are constantly looking to improve. They are making mistakes and, and, and constantly using them to make a big step forward. And they're also just hungry for success. So attitude is super important. And these are some of the traits I've seen uh, in one particular trader, actually, uh, that really holds them back massively. The first one is wishing for an ATM machine, wishing for an easy strategy, or, uh, you know, he, he described it as a cheat code. The reality is, Probably 1% of retail traders are successful trading. And of that 1%, you're probably looking at 5 to 10% who are making more money than they could do if they were working a uh, fairly well-paid job. So you're looking at 0.1, of retail traders making serious money trading. If there was an easy way of doing it, a, a cheat code, an ATM machine, however you want to describe it, that number would be significantly higher, significantly higher. The reality is trading is really tough, not just finding an edge, but the execution of that edge accurately over and over, it's very tough. So simply wishing for an easy way of trading, um, it's not gonna get you very far. A much better thing would be to accept, hey, this is really fucking difficult and I need to put in way more work than 99.9% .9 of people to become successful. Saying they will make changes, but never doing so. This is something that I've, uh, you know, I, I think is a real pet peeve of mine where someone tells me I'm going to start journaling. Yeah, I will. And then three months later, they've never started. You know, they said multiple times, I'm going to start journaling. I'm going to start doing this. And then they never do. And then when they make mistakes and you ask them about it, they, they don't know if they've repeated those mistakes because they've never journaled it. I think one of the best excuses I ever heard for this or the two, two mistakes uh, I heard for this particular thing um, which you can see down here, and never journaling because I won't look back at them. Journaling's not about, you know, in trading at least, I don't think that journaling is purely writing down your emotions and feelings. That's part of it. It's being able to screenshot a trade and add it to a uh, data collection of trades so that you can look back. And I constantly look back. I look back all the time at trades I took, you know, two, three months ago, trades that I missed two, three months ago, mistakes that I made two, three months ago, and seeing how I made improvements. And, you know, one of the, one of the most beneficial things I've been, in, been able to do is look back at charts that I've screenshotted in August of last year, February of last year. And I've looked at them and gone, so the edge that, I, that the current version of my edge, which has been updated as I keep on improving it, I can look back and go, hey, that's interesting. My, my updated version would have done better than what I was doing back in February or back in August. Uh, and then the, the other excuse um, that I've heard is, oh, I couldn't find, you know, I, I couldn't make Excel work. So I'm, I, I want to use something, you know, simple online that I don't have to put any effort into. Lazy. Um, but just in general, if you're saying you make a change, 
Go and make that change. Go and do some work on it. Don't just say it and think you'll wish it into existence. Blaming others for their mistakes. I've had this from uh, a few people, if I'm honest. But if you if you make a mistake, if you make a bad trade, if you take a loss that you shouldn't have taken, there's one person you can blame. And that person is sitting where you're sitting. As simple as that. Sometimes things happen that are out of your control. Maybe your broker goes down. Maybe... Um, part of your software glitches and you end up you know, not being in the, in the position you thought you were or, or something. Fine. But 99% of mistakes are made because you took a trade you knew you shouldn't have done. You chased a loss. You didn't take your stop where you should have done. You took your stop too soon. If you blame anybody else for that, then you're missing out on the opportunity to improve. Being focused on P&L. This is huge. If you are constantly looking at your P&L, and this is different for different people, right? Because some people, if you're focused on P&L and you just have it in the background and you're aware, it doesn't change you know, the desire to be like, I don't care how much I'm up today. I want to keep on trading at my best. I don't care how much I'm down today. I want to keep on trading at my best, right? But for some people, the focus on P&L, you know, I've had people say, oh, I was up 200 on the day and then I kept trading. Then I was down 50 and I wanted to make it back. What have I done? And I said, well, were you trading well? And they didn't really have any answer. They didn't know if they were trading well. Because they were so focused on the P&L, they didn't know if they were taking good trades or not. And the worst part was that when their P&L began going red, it made their performance get significantly worse. I always ask clients, you know, uh, what benefit is there of having your P&L on the screen? And the only few that I've heard have been along the lines of, well, I know when I hit my max um, daily loss on the day. That's literally it. Being brutally honest, if you don't know that you're near your max daily loss of the day, um, if you've taken three or four trades and they've all gone against you and you have a max loss of you know, four, four, trade, four, four losers in a row, if you're not able to be aware of that, then that's, that's a whole other problem. Looking at others who have made it and being sour and jealous. And this, I think, is uh, quite a common trait amongst people. You know, We see somebody who's you know, been able to achieve what we want to achieve and it's, you know, quite difficult to not be like, oh, I wish I could have done that. But there's a there's a level of this. And if you are constantly going on somebody's stream and watching it and then reporting in a, in a friendship group or whatever saying, oh, this douchebag, he just keeps on making money. He shouldn't be making money like this. Or, um, man, he's found the cheat code, but it'll never work for anybody else. It's you know ridiculous. He should get banned from prop firms for using it or words to this extent. That's ridiculous. You have an opportunity on YouTube to go and look at these people who are really successful and learn from their edge. Being sour and jealous about them makes no sense whatsoever. Use it as inspiration. If this guy can make it, so can I. And I've already covered that never, journal, never journaling. So these are some really key things um, that I think the worst traders out there have as attitude issues. Actions. So in here, I'm going to talk more about you know things that traders do. The most obvious one is jumping from strategy to strategy. And I've seen this with so many traders who um, see a little bit of success and then it all falls apart because they made a ton of mistakes and they changed their strategy. You know, I've worked with um, people who have, who have literally had uh, three weeks of success and a week of, um, of failings, if you like, or losing, and they completely go 180 on their strategy. I've had you know uh, people who who have looked at a strategy, had success, and then you know, they, they make a ton of mistakes, they get really frustrated at themselves, and then they say that wasn't an edge that I was trading before, I'm gonna move on to something else, I'm gonna go back to a different time frame. I'm gonna start using this, I'm gonna start doing this. Doesn't work. You have to pick one. Trading is like the Olympics. There's many ways you can win a medal, but you have to master one. You cannot win a medal in a 100 meter sprint, the high jump, the long jump, the marathon, and the swimming events. You pick one and you go all in on one and you spend a lot of time on that one. Making mistakes and never learning from them. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody screws up from time to time. But every time you do that, there's an opportunity to learn. And if you make a mistake and then go, oh, that was such a stupid trade and you never look at why it was stupid, you never understand why you made the mistake, then you're passing up an opportunity to improve. And that, you know, do that once or twice every now and again, fine. Like I'll sometimes take a trade, be really frustrated at it. But if you never learn from them, you're going to repeat them. Saying things like, I'm done for the day. 
and then taking more trades. And this, this for me is, is kind of like uh, twofold. One, if you're saying that because you've already hit your, your, your trading badly, then it shows that you cannot stop yourself from trading and you're a gambler. Um, you know, if, you if you have a hard rule and I'm going to stop trading after this many trades, which I don't think is the best way to do it, but if you have that and you can't follow it, then you're just you know building a habit of breaking rules. And if you're saying I'm done for the day because you're up a certain amount and then you take more trades, then you're, you're putting yourself in a situation where if you take a loss, you're going to be really pissed at yourself because you kept on trading. And that just makes it more likely you're going to make a mistake. So when you say things like I'm done for the day because I'm up $100, green is green. That reinforces that focus on PL. That reinforces that a good day is a day that I made money. I'm done for the day. I can turn off. I can do something else. The best traders in the world who who close out when you know they've they're up a certain amount, they do that because they know that they can kind of trade whenever that they they you know, maybe they know there's a particular time that they have an edge, but they can trade for an hour, really focus, and then their performance tails off. And they've tracked that and they've seen that over years. Fine. They're probably making so much money. You know, the really successful ones are making a few thousand, then they can walk away. If you make a few thousand dollars in the space of an hour and you want to go off and do something else and you can do that again and again, then that's fine. But if you're at the stage in your career, which every trader really is, bar the top 1%, maybe top 0.1%, where the P&L shouldn't make any difference and you're looking to improve, the whole day is an opportunity to make improvements. No discipline. Um, this is a really, you know, big topic. I'm not going to get too much into it, but... You can tell when a trader is, you know, working on discipline and just doesn't care and has no discipline. And when you when you want to be successful in something like trading, you have to have an element of discipline. You need to be able to say, I don't think this is a great trade setup, so I'm not going to take it. I don't think that I should be, you know, looking for a long in this current market, so you don't take the longs. If you're unable to do that, you're never going to be successful because at least half of your trades are going to be impulse trades that you shouldn't have taken. And then finally, spending no time on areas to improve. Often this comes as, oh, I'm making improvements. I'm looking at charts. I'm looking for my pattern in charts. I'm backtesting a new strategy. Well, guess what? Most people fail because they have a successful edge and they can't execute it properly. So spending time looking at that edge and going, oh, I could have made this amount today. I could have made this amount today. That doesn't work. You've got to go, why am I not achieving this? Why am I making mistakes? Why am I screwing up? Go deeper into that and then resolve that. Spending no time on figuring out how to improve is, you know, is, is, is one of the main reasons why so many people never make it. So some easy ways to improve. Uh, a lot of these points is one particular trader. Um, so if you've made it this far, if you're watching this video, this is what I would suggest you do. And these are very easy ways to improve. Number one, Journal all your trades. The reason you want to journal all your trades is not so that you can talk about your feelings or anything like that. It's so that you can track over time how you perform. If over the space of two weeks, you take say um, 40 trades, four trades a day, and in those 40 trades, 25 of them are mistakes, then your accuracy level is so low that you're never gonna be successful. If you journal, um, you know, things like how you prepared, how you slept and all of that. It may seem silly, but let's say that you trade really well on Monday and Tuesday after a really good night's sleep. And then on Wednesday, you have a bad night's sleep and you trade poorly. If you don't journal that, you're never going to pick that out. You're going to say it, you're going to realize it, but you're not going to pick it out. Um, you know, you're going to forget about it. Whereas if you journal it, next time you sleep poorly, you can go, you know what? I slept poorly last time and it didn't work out. So what can I do today to avoid that mistake? Create a clear black and white playbook, playbook that is proven to have an edge. Um, again, if you don't have data that proves that what you're doing works, then you're guessing all the time. And I'm not saying like, oh, you're guessing, you know, if this is a setup or not. What I mean is you're guessing as to how profitable your edge might be. You're guessing as to the best approach to getting in, getting out. You're guessing at where you should be putting your stops. You need to collect that data and look at it. You need to be able to go, you know what, 90% of the trades that I that I have backtested, they got nowhere near my stop, so I can go over tighter stop. Or you might find that, you know what, at least 30% of the trades that get stopped out, they got stopped out by a few ticks and would have then gone to my profit target. So I should actually have a wider stop. It could be that, you know, 
60% of my trades actually go to two, uh, go to a one to two risk rewards. And that would be the most profitable way of doing it. So I'm just going to set a one to two risk reward and leave it. Without a clear playbook that is black and white and proven to work, you don't know if you have an edge. Learn from your mistakes, like spelling the word mistake wrong. Um, this is, this is, this is like low hanging fruit stuff. Like if you keep on making the same mistake, guess what you should, you know, go to improve on that mistake. If you keep on getting out of trades early, you need to work on that. If you keep on impulsing into trades that you know shouldn't be trades, you need to work on that. You need to learn from the mistakes. Don't just make it and go, I won't do that again. Make it, understand why you did it, and then track how often you make that mistake. Understand your biggest weakness, whether that's mental game, technical, it doesn't matter. Understand where you make the most mistakes, where your biggest weakness is, and target that as an area to improve and make a, a you know, a conscious effort every day to make an improvement in that area. Stop doing anything that distracts you from your trading goal. If you find that watching streamers whilst trading hurts your performance, stop watching them. If you find that taking trades past a certain time doesn't, um, your, your performance drops significantly, stop trading at that time. If you find that um, spending hours on Discord during the day, having arguments or talking, distracts you and makes you perform worse. Don't go on Discord. It's really simple. It's not easy to do because, you know, a lot of those, they're, they're dopamine hits. You know, we want to go on YouTube to see if our favorite trader is making money or if our least favorite trader is losing money. But if you are giving in to those, you know, that's the same as saying, I want to lose weight, but I kind of going to eat all this chocolate anyway. And then finally, I'm actually going to, um, you know, I'm not sponsored at all by this. I, I, I never, never will be. But I do want to promote the book One Good Trade. I'm only about a third of the way through. I listen to it um, for for about half hour, hour a day. The value in that book is absolutely incredible. It, it gives you a real insight into how successful traders have become successful. The attitudes they need to be um they, they need to have to be successful the sort of things that they do to improve the work that they put in and also the the lack of work and the poor attitude that the traders who aren't successful um they, the, the work they don't put in the attitude that they have i think that it's probably the most valuable rounded trading book out there because it talks about um the whole process of trading from learning to to successful it doesn't just focus on the mental game it focuses on uh, or doesn't just focus on strategies it focuses on what you need to look and be like in order to be a successful trader you look at the top sports players in the world they all seem to have the same kind of or a lot of them have the same attributes the confidence the the surety the work effort of someone that you you know, you look at look at the best in the world and then you begin to see how much work they put in and you realize this guy's the best in the world because for 15 straight years, they put in eight hours a day to become the best at their craft. And then they got to be the best at their craft and guess what? They're putting eight hours a day to make sure they stay at the best. Trading's no different and I really think that one good trade is um, it's a trading book, if, if that wasn't obvious. I really believe that that is probably the book that really emphasizes that and give you a bit of a uh, an outline how to do that. So everybody out there who has made it to the end, thank you very much. I hope you've learned a bit from this. Um, hopefully you don't show too many of those traits yourself, but if you do, you know what to do now to make improvements. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next few videos. I hope you're enjoying all this content. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.